How's it guys? My name is Marks here, aka Peter. Today I have a very special guest with me, Ditse Gofazzo. She has a nice YouTube channel all about personal finance and entrepreneurship. And today I'm going to have a little interview with her just to ask her a couple of questions about her career as a software developer slash engineer and how she has kind of established her entrepreneurial journey. Welcome, Ditse Gofazzo. Thank you so much for having me on your channel. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay, awesome. So, Stefato, you started working as a software engineer about two years ago. Can you maybe explain your journey of how you got started, where you studied, how long this study was, and how you kind of experienced your job so far the past two years? All right, no problem. So I'll tell you the whole story. So I've been creating content uh, for a long time. So my journey to software engineering involves content creation. So I started with a blog in 2014 and I noticed people's blogs looked kind of nicer than mine and mine was kind of boring. So I started learning how to like customize my blog and that's when I learned about HTML and CSS. So I was about 14 at the time. So in high school I took IT and then I really enjoyed that. That's when I decided that I'm going to study computer science. So I studied computer science at the University of Pretoria for three years. I graduated in April 2021 and that's where I started like working full time. And yeah, it's been two years now. It's been an interesting journey, lots of learning outside of school as well. But I really enjoy like being involved in like a real world project, things that people use every day. And I guess also just continuing to learn more, like there's so much to learn and I really enjoy that. Okay, awesome. I think the software engineering field is, is quite popular now and in high demand. The world is becoming more digitized, so most brick and mortar companies are moving online, so they have to set up their own online stores, they have to get up, set up a website. Even content creation is, is very important in today's day and age to, to promote the product. Um, so it's, it's, it's quite an a industry that's growing rapidly and, and um, something that I believe will, will be quite in demand in the future as well. So as I understand, there are different types of software engineers. Can you maybe explain a bit more about the, the different types and which one you are currently busy with and how you want to progress? Okay. Yeah, there's lots of different kinds, but I think I'll just stick to like uh, back end, front end and full stack. Mm -hmm. So front end would be the developer that works on things that you can see and things that you can interact with. So if you're on a website, like the buttons that you can click, the layout, everything of that sort, but it also involves like designers. So the designers would make the whole design and you just bring it to life. So that's front end. And then back end is like, I guess like the bells, whistles, everything that makes things work that you can't, like when you click the button, something needs to happen. Mm. So it's like everything there, like storing your information to a database and just make uh, making sure everything runs smoothly because you don't want to click a button and wait like 10 seconds mm -hmm. for something to happen. Yeah. So yeah, the back end is like things that you can't see and then uh, full stack is when you do both. So okay. I started my career as a front end developer focusing on React Native and I am currently upskilling to become a full stack developer. Okay, awesome. So full stack em encompasses everything. So that's kind of the all in one package deal. Um, <laughs> so with, with front end, I, I assume you have to be more, have more of a bit of a creative side to, to kind of figure out the layout where back end it's, it's more like a, um, kind of the coding and the, the organization and the analytical side. What type of person would you say is, is suitable to become a, a software engineer, either for the front end or back end or full stack? Honestly, I think it's for everyone. I think just okay. give it a try and see which one you like, because even though like front end involves a bit of creativity and but it's also a lot of uh, coding, including like, you know, connecting to APIs and even like making those designs is usually already designed. So you have to just make sure you stick to how it's supposed to be. And then with the back end, it also does involve some creativity. Like I think mm -hmm. um, problem solving and coming up with the solution also needs a bit of creativity, making sure that uh, things run smoothly and making the code efficient as well involves some creativity. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then I think what's on everyone's mind with, with most professions is kind of what is the salary expectations that you when, when, when you first start as a software developer and how you can progress, I think that's something important to consider. Not the most important thing, yeah. but I mean, we all need to make a living. And um, if you can maybe just share just some general numbers of, of what a okay. person can expect. 
all right so i'll share what i got for my first ever like salary as a full-time uh, developer so i started off at 18,000 rands per month this was in march 2021 mm -hmm. and it is now two years within my journey and now the range is between 35,000 rands per month to 45,000 rands per month so it's around there and this is the gross monthly income okay and I assume that's for full 40 hours a week. Um, can you maybe share some of your, how, how your day-to-day -day life is as a, as a software engineer? You know, the hours you work, kind of what you do during the day, what, what the person can expect in that field? All right, so I work full-time 40 hours, eight to five every week. So what it involves is um, meetings, you know, we have some meetings to plan, uh, to check like what work we're going to do, what work we did. And in terms of the work I do, since I mostly focus on front end, I would be given like a design and some uh, steps of what's expected to happen. For example, on that screen. So I do React Native, which is mobile development. So I'll be uh, told what are the expectations of what happens on that screen. So then I just uh, code according to those requirements and then I'll put it in for testing. Then it gets tested by the quality assurance team. And yeah, once that passes testing, then I move on to the next uh, ticket. So it's usually working on bugs and new features. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then I, I assume with software engineering, you kind of have a coding language that you need to learn and that's universal so as a soft Af qualified south african software engineer can you also work for overseas companies is do you sometimes get opportunities from american or european companies um, is that something that is available for south africans yes it definitely is there's some platforms out there that um, advertise like jobs from all around the world so you can take a look at that i'm not too familiar with all of them but i know even google puts their you know jobs online i'm not sure that's a good one to mention right now <laughs> but yeah um i think just check out online just search also linkedin is also a good platform and they also i know people really like working for international companies for example you get paid in dollars which yes. with the conversion rate makes it a bit more than what you would earn if you're working for a south african company yeah that's some nice arbitrage of the dollar strengthening against the rand that's yeah. um, i think the ideal work environment would be to to earn in dollars but to spend in rand yes. um, that that is uh, definitely a good way to go yeah. so in terms of of the future of the industry um with with the rise of ai and and you know um chat bot, bots like chat gpt and you know other um companies like mid journey creating art and you know how we can quickly be optimize most other processes of of the working environment how do you see artificial intelligence influencing the career of the software engineer? Do you think it's a threat? Do you think it's a nice addition to you guys? Um, especially since, you know, ChatGPT can do basic coding um, for up to a certain point. Um, what, what is your opinion on, on artificial intelligence? Yeah, I don't think it's a threat to like software developers and software engineers. I think it's something we can use mm. to be more productive. I've already been using it. <laughs> it's a really great tool. Like it has been making me so fast. So mm. I think you just need to know the right way to use it. Because as you said, it can generate some code. So if you don't have to spend time on the basic things, maybe you can think of like the approach to solve the problem and, you know, get some assistance to make it the whole uh, process faster. Yeah, I think that's that's the biggest advantage. Um, I think many people see AI as a threat. They're going to replace our jobs. They're going to take over. You know, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we are at that stage yet. Um, mm -hmm. But it definitely helps to to streamline processes. And what I see as a very good opportunity is, is to, you know, you're probably not going to be replaced by AI. You're going to be replaced by someone who can use AI. Yeah. <laughs> so a better way to look at it is, is, as you've mentioned, use the tools to your advantage. You can cut out so much redundant time by just streamlining the process and um, using the tools to, to increase your productivity. That means you can improve your results and you can earn more. So learning how these tools work and not necessarily being scared of the movement, but just learning how to incorporate that into your job is definitely a, a, a good way to go. Are there any specific tools that you have used so far that you found um, useful? Uh, just to learn or AI tools? Um, yeah, AI tools in general that um, you mentioned ChatGPT. Are there any other tools that you've come across? 
honestly once i started using chat gpt i realized like i was missing out on yeah. a lot of things so it's something i wasn't doing but i think seeing a trend and the popularity mm. made me start uh, actually checking that out so that's the only one i've been using but i'd like to actually look what what else is out there yeah. yes yeah sure and i've also seen some people using a program like chat gpt to create other types of applications and i think mm-hmm. if you have the the background of coding knowledge you can create new types of products that can you know solve people's problems and then sell that and make money mm-hmm. it's kind of how you make money in life you provide value while being convenient and chat gpt is very convenient so if you <laughs> fi- figure out where there's a gap in the market you know something people struggle with every day and you package that in a little product that you can sell then people will probably pay for it um, so that's awesome and then Outside of your full-time employment as a software engineer, you also have a couple of other projects running. Obviously, she has that awesome YouTube channel that you guys must please go and subscribe. Um, The Tsechofatsu, I'll put a link to it down in the description. Um, So uh, share with us your journey of becoming a creator and then it's kind of a couple of other projects that you're also working on on the side, please. Okay, so yeah, my content creation journey started with blogging, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So actually, I actually started YouTube before blogging. But mm-hmm. data was so expensive. <laughs> I was like a teenager. I couldn't afford to post on YouTube all the time. So that's when I discovered blogging and I'd blog about like fashion and just the most random things. But I think I just really still enjoyed creating YouTube content. So whenever I got the chance, I'd post on YouTube. I've had like three or four YouTube channels because I've been all over the place. I think just growing up, just figuring myself out. And yeah, I started this channel uh, in about 2016, but it started just making sense in 2020. So yeah, that's, I would say my main side hustle. That's where I make most of my side hustle income. So through my ad revenue on YouTube, as well as sponsored posts that I do on my social media platforms. So the other side hustles that I do, um, also have a small business where I hand make soy wax candles and then I sell those. So it's, I sell them online, but also go to markets and sell them in person. So I stand there, I'm like, hi guys. And people say, no, we're coming back. No, no, <laughs> but they don't come back. But yeah, it's a nice experience. I really, I actually really enjoy that. And I also teach kids and adults how to code with my company, Easy Code. So it's virtual and we're moving into boot camps. We've hosted two boot camps at schools. So yeah, I also really enjoy that. It's so nice to see people that are so eager to learn and just being able to you know share the information with them yeah that's awesome and i think being full-time employed is definitely an, uh, a good way to start but many of us have so many interests outside of our employment you know you're kind of at school at the, the the one stage you need to ask permission to go to the bathroom and the next moment you need to decide what you're going to do the rest <laughs> of your life yeah. so i think many of us decide on a career based on the information we have at the time and then we study we start working but then we have so many other interests outside of the workplace and I would always encourage someone if you have interest to pursue it in, in your time off. The challenge is trying to balance everything yeah. with 40 hour weeks, you know, apart from a lot, yeah. the, the time you spend, you're also tired and not always, you know, listening to work in the evenings or over weekends. Um, so can you maybe share how you manage to juggle everything in, at the same time and how you manage your time and how do you keep your energy levels um, at the top? <laughs> yeah, I'd like to say like it is a lot of work. I think that's why you should be passionate about the things that you yeah. do because it's going to require a lot of time and energy. So I would work like um, eight to five. After work, I give lessons sometimes. So I usually give lessons from six to seven teaching kids how to code. And also sometimes during my lunch break, that's when I have to go and deliver orders. So I send them to Aramex or Pep Paxi. So I have to do that during my lunch break. So you do have to make some sacrifices. It's going to be some long nights, but I think it has those benefits. Because if it's something that you really enjoy, like I really enjoy making the candles, making new scents, figuring out how I'm going to decorate it. Like like it's a hobby as well. So it's something I'm enjoying. It gets Mm. to distract me from other things that are stressing me out. So I really Mm. like that and yeah just you're gonna have to make time like sometimes you have to choose like am i gonna be scrolling on tiktok or am i gonna be working on this so yes it's about being passionate about it and actually making the time to do it what is also very important is you mentioned you started your youtube journey in about 2016 and before that a bit of blogging so we're at 2023 now and now you're at a point where you start you know generating decent income but it's not it's not easy it's not quick it's not yeah. a quick easy way to to make money you know um you need to to know in the beginning that it's going to take a long time so 
if you're going to start these hustles, shouldn't necessarily be just to make money. I mean, that is great. It's, it's forms part of it, but you have to follow that passion because that's what's going to sustain you when you work for 20 hours mm-hmm. on a video and you get five views. <laughs> that's me. So um, whatever interests you have, you know, pursue it and, and learn as you go. I mean, starting a YouTube channel that requires so many skills uh, from scripting and editing and filming and being able to present, you know, that, that takes a, long, a lot of time. I was very awkward my first video, mm-hmm. probably still am, Same, yeah. but it's, it's a process, it's a, it's a journey, you, you learn and you grow as you go along. Um, so, but what is important is to, to hold on to that passion and, and work, you know, with it. Do you have any specific recommendations to someone, say a 14 year old that has an interest in, in this field, any tips that you would give them, how they can get started? You mentioned you have the, the um, academy that we we'll also link to down the description, but just kind of what what you would consider someone that's a good fit for this career uh, i would highly recommend just starting to learn because there's mm. so many tools and resources available yes. so as you mentioned i have the co-tutoring company so the reason we started that is because our goal is to help people get started mm. because sometimes you want to learn there's so much information available so you don't know where to start so our goal is to just get you started get you over the first hurdle of figuring out what am i actually supposed to be learning like you know because mm. there's so many programming languages there's so many like you'll just start learning a random thing that's not really helpful at that time so yeah that's what we help with getting you started over the hurdle and there's like um platforms like uh, there's code academy that's a free uh platform there's free code camp and there's us easy code if maybe you're finding it a bit challenging learning on your own so i just say just start just see where you can start go on youtube i highly recommend working on projects because that kind of gives you like all the skills that you need to just finish something and see how everything works so just figure out do you want to do web development do you want to work on apps like what are you trying to build once you have that started see what you need to learn to build that and then just start and learn as you go Yes, and I think you mentioned very important um, aspect. You you need to learn the theory, obviously. Coding is a new language. It's like learning a physical new language. Um, but the implementation of that language is the most important, applying what you've learned in a practical sense. And uh, in today's day and age, there are so many free re- resources available on, on YouTube and the internet um, that you can get started. And I think in, especially if you are still younger, it's a great way to start now so that by the time you get 18 and you need to decide on a career, then you already have some experience and that's kind of the important thing that I wish I did when I was that age, just kind of figuring out where I want to go in the future. Do you think a degree is a necessity to to advance in this career path to become successful or are there other ways? Uh, some people are not able to, to you know go to university. Are there other, other ways where you can maybe do a course or gain some experience and then still get employment? Yes, it's just a bit tricky because some companies, they just want to see the degree. Yes. But there's a lot of companies that want to see your experience. And uh, I think 95% of the interviews I've done, they make you do a test. They want to see what you're mm. able to do. Like you have to be able to code. So if you can show that you can do that, then I think that's great. So I think always just try, like just apply for everything mm. and take it from there. But yeah, you can go in with a degree, with an internship, with coming from a different career but if you can do the work there are some companies that will give you a chance yes i think it's kind of that catch 52 you need work to gain experience but you need experience to gain work um so just kind of breaking that that barrier of, of starting to work for a company even if it's a small company and you almost work for free building up a portfolio and then using that to show it to the next company i think degrees as as had this um it's, it's very important to have one and it's very nice to have one but I think the world is evolving past that point where you need to go to university, you know, to get a good job. I think, you know, gaining experience and having that practical knowledge is sometimes also very important. Mm-hmm. So even if you are not able to, to go to university, there are still ways to, to make it in life. You know, you just need to be willing to put in the work and follow your interest and um, yeah, just learn. That's, that's yeah. the important thing <laughs> and implement what you've learned. All right. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed the interview. And yes, um, I will link to a YouTube channel down in the description and the Easy Code Academy that you guys can go check out. And yes, please go and subscribe to her channel. And if you guys have any questions with regards to, to her employment, then drop them in the comments and we will both try and answer them. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. This is so fun. Awesome. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you guys. Bye-bye. Bye.